I'm going to talk about empirical and theoretical probability. I'll tell you about some terminology. What are events? What are outcomes? What are equally likely outcomes? What does the notation P of E mean? What is the law of large numbers? And I will also talk about some of the important facts about probability and how we calculate theoretical and empirical probabilities. So first, let's experiment. Do you have a spare die sitting around? If you do, then get ready to roll. So what I want you to do is pause and roll the die 60 times, or as many times as you can bear to roll it. Try to roll it a bunch. But before you begin rolling, do a guesstimate. How many times do you think each number will be rolled? For example, how many times will you roll a 4? How many times do you think you'll roll a 5 out of those 60 times, or however many times you plan on rolling it? Okay, so now, pause, roll the die that many times, as many times as you want, hopefully a lot, and record the tally. So what did you observe? How did your actual results compare with what you thought would happen? Now nobody knows except for you what you thought would happen, so if you're way off, no big deal. We're going to learn about probability here. First of all, let's do some terminology. Did you do an experiment? I called it an experiment, but why? Well, an experiment is a controlled operation that yields a set of results. So you roll the die in your room or on your desk. That was pretty controlled. And that gave a set of results. So each time you rolled, one of the numbers was sitting on top of the die. An outcome is a possible result of the experiment. So you could roll a 6, and that would be one of the outcomes. So in our experiment, there were six possible outcomes for each roll of the die. You could roll a 1, you could roll a 2, etc., all up to 6. And I'm assuming that you just have a normal, traditional die. If you have some other kind of a die, then your outcomes will be a little bit different. We also have the idea of an event, and that's a subcollection of the outcomes of an experiment. An event could just be one particular outcome, so an event might be rolling a 1. So you roll a 1, that was an event. Another event could be defined as rolling a 3 or a 6. So you roll your die, and you're hoping the event that you want to happen is that you roll a 3 or a 6. So an event can be a combination of out outcomes. So the empirical probability is finding probabilities by experimenting. P of E, the probability that an event will occur, that's what that notation means, is, and now we have a fraction in the numerator on top. You've got the number of times the event has occurred. And in the, on the bottom, the denominator is the total number of times the experiment has occurred. So let's take our die rolling experiment. Let's say that you rolled a 4 nine times out of the 60 times that you rolled. So we would say the probability and our event was rolling a 4 is equal to 9 out of 60. So 9 in the numerator, 60 in the denominator. Now, if you're good with fractions, you know that you could simplify that by reducing 3 out of 20. We can also represent probabilities with decimals or percentages. So if you convert that fraction to a decimal, you get 0 0.15. Convert that to a percentage, you get 15%. So 15% of the time, you rolled a 4. Now we can also say that the probability of not rolling a 4 is 85%. Why do you think? Well, we'll look at that in a few minutes. Here's another experiment, a coin toss. So you get a coin, let's say you flip it 100 times. And let's say that 49 times heads comes up. So what's the probability of flipping a heads just based on these results? 0.15. 
Well, it would be 49 out of 100, or 0.49, or 49%. One more example, and this is used when companies are doing clinical trials for drugs. So for example, let's say a drug company has this new medication that they are claiming reduces blood pressure. They give this medication, this drug, to 500 patients. And here's the results. So presumably their blood pressure was measured sometime at the beginning. They took the drug for some period of time. And then their blood pressure was measured again. So for 379 of those patients, their blood pressure was actually reduced. 62 of the patients had no change. And for an unlucky 59 patients, their blood pressure was actually increased. So now another patient comes along and says, well, I'm not sure whether to take this drug. What's the probability that my blood pressure will be reduced? Well, if we base our answer on this experiment that we've just done, we would say that 379 out of 500 we're converting that to a percentage, 75.8% probability of getting your blood pressure reduced. Do the same type of calculation for your blood pressure being unchanged and for your blood pressure being increased. Now that's all the possible outcomes that were measured in this experiment. We've covered them all and if you were to take those percentages, 75.8, 12.4, 11.8, and add them up, you would actually get 100% because we have covered every single case that could happen in this very simple experiment. Now, it's a little risky to predict probabilities, to describe probabilities based on experiments. The more trials you have, the more accurate you can define your empirical probabilities. So if you roll a die, your empirical results, your experimental results, get closer and closer to the expected results. Here's an example. If you take a die and you roll it only twice and use that to predict some probabilities, let's say that when you rolled the first time you got a 3 and that when you rolled the second time, you got a 6. So in the first case, we would calculate a 0 0.50 for 3, because we only rolled the die twice, and we'd get a 0.5 probability for the 6. But that somehow doesn't feel right. So if you were to roll the die 60 times, or 100 times, or 500 times, or a million times, the more times you roll it, the closer you will get to the expected results. Any probability statements that we make really, we assume, apply to a large number of trials, not just to one single trial. Probability really tells us what will happen over the long run. And it's really only accurately predictable over the long run. Now we also talk about theoretical probabilities. Sometimes it's really just impossible to perform enough experiments to make accurate predictions. We can often calculate probabilities without doing experiments. Now not always, but there are times when we can. And when we can, this is called theoretical probability. For example, in rolling a die, we really don't have to do an experiment. We can figure out the probabilities of each roll. So we know. We look at our die and we can see there are six possible outcomes each time we roll a die. So the probability of an event is the number of outcomes favorable to the event that we're looking at divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Well, there are six possible outcomes, and if I am looking at the probability of rolling a 3, there's only one outcome that is favorable to rolling a 3, because there's only one 3 on the die. Now, if I've defined my event as rolling a 3 or a 5, so I'm satisfied if either one of those comes up, then I have a 2 out of 6 probability of that event happening.
So think back to that experiment that you did with your dye and look at the results you get. How close were you in your empirical data? Look at your tally. For example, look at your tally. How many times did you roll a three? What was that probability? What did it calculate out to? And now look at our theoretical probability where we can simply calculate it based on what we know about a die. The probability of rolling a three is one out of six or 0 0.167, or you could translate that to 16.7%. How close were you in your experiment? And do you think if you had rolled the die a lot more times, you would have gotten closer? Well, you should. Here's a little more terminology, equally likely outcomes. So if each outcome of an experiment has the same chance of occurring as any other outcome, we call them equally likely outcomes. So once again, we have our rolling a die. Is the chance of rolling a one the same as rolling a two? So again, you have to just imagine that we have the perfect die. It's perfectly balanced. So if we look at the die like that, then yes, any number is equally likely to turn up as any other number. So those would be equally likely outcomes. Is the chance of rolling an even number the same as rolling an odd number? It definitely is. There's three even numbers on the die and there's three odd numbers. What about picking a card out of a deck? So now if you're not familiar with cards, in a deck there are generally 52 cards and half of them are black and half of them are red. So if they're shuffled perfectly, do you have an equally likely chance of choosing a black as you do of choosing a red? Well, theoretically, yes, you do. So those are equally likely outcomes. When you roll a die, there are six equally likely outcomes. But now let me ask you this. Let's say you have two dice. How many possible outcomes? And are the outcomes equally likely? I'll let you think about that. In the meantime, let's go on to some important probability facts. The probability that an event cannot occur is zero. And what I mean by that is that you have some event that is just simply impossible. Back to your die. If you have a die that has the numbers 1 through 6 on it, what's the probability you roll a 7? Well, 0, because it's impossible. There just isn't a 7 there. Another fact, the probability that an event must occur is 1. So here's an example. Let's say you have 10 Snickers bars in a bag. What is the probability that when you take a piece of candy out of the bag, it will be a Snickers bar. Well, all there is are Snickers bars, so 100%. More important facts, every probability is a number between 0 and 1. They're all fractions. Here's an example. A bag with 10 pieces of candy, 3 Snickers, 3 packages of gummy bears, 4 packages of M&Ms. What are all the possible outcomes? And what is the probability of each outcome? The sum of the probabilities of all possible outcomes, as long as they're equally likely, is 1. So in our bag, if you said that there is a probability of picking a Snickers is 3 out of 10. For gummy bears, 3 out of 10. For M&Ms, it's 4 out of 10. If we add those up, we get 10 out of 10. That covers all the candy, and that's equal to 1. So the sum of the probabilities of all out possible outcomes is 1. So given that the sum of all probabilities of all possible outcomes is 1, this leads us to say that the probability that an event will occur plus the probability that it won't occur is 1. So for example, rolling a single die, what's the probability of rolling a 5? So by now, you will probably are saying it's 1 sixth. Well, what's the probability of not rolling a 5? Well, not rolling a 5 means you're going to roll one of those other numbers. There happens to be five other numbers. 
So that would be 5 out of 6. So we have 1 out of 6 plus 5 out of 6 is equal to 1. All right, so do you know these things? Based on what you've been hearing here, can you describe to someone else what empirical and theoretical probabilities are? Can you use this terminology? Events, outcomes, probabilities? Can you use the right notation? Do you understand the law of large numbers and could you give someone an example of how it works? Can you describe the important facts about probability? And can you calculate simple probabilities, both theoretical and empirical?